On this episode, I'm joined by Jim Masterson, founder of The Masterson Method, which is a breakthrough form of equine body work, which helps enhance performance, suppleness, mobility, and comfort while developing with the relationship and bond of trust between the horse and the owner. So here we go, episode 189, Jim Masterson. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. Jim Masterson is probably somebody that you've already heard about. He has an amazing reputation and it's worldwide. So he began his career in 2000, working on horses competing in the U.S. show jumping events before going on to become the equine bodywork therapist for the U.S. EF endurance team from 2006 through 2014. And since then, Jim has worked on thousands of equine athletes competing in events such as the FEI World Cup, Pan American and World Equestrian Games competitions. He's the author of Beyond Horse Massage and Dressage Movements Revealed, and he paired up with Dr. Robin Robinette, uh, DVM, uh, to release a new book called Beyond Dog Massage. Now, since 2006, over 10,000 people have attended the Masterson Method weekend courses, and Jim and his instructors have trained over 500 certified practitioners in 20 countries. It's Jim's vision to have every horse on the planet experience the the bladder meridian technique at least once and to empower owners, carers, competitors, or professionals with the means to deeply connect with their horse or dog. I'm really happy to get this chance to speak with him. I have heard about him for years and heard only rave reviews And I recently started learning more about the Masterson Method and learned the basic technique that you can find for free on his website and YouTube. And I'm seeing some really nice effects on my horses. And I really love uh, how he does the technique and how he it's really based on listening to the horse and empowering people to listen to their horses, which, as you guys know, if you listen to this pod, is something that I find really, really important. So, okay, let's get right to the conversation. Jim, thank you so much for being a guest on the pod. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So I have been aware of you for quite some time. Uh, Your name would come up and I've always heard nothing but, you know, rave reviews about you and your method. And so for, for actually so a long you time, hear, you are now, you want to hear the other side. Of the now story. I want to hear the, I want to hear the truth. <laughs> <laughs> We're going behind the scenes, but yeah, but it's one of those things that I've had this sense of like, there's someone I really need to talk to, or I really need to learn his stuff. And um, it's also one of those things that, you know, I've, I have not done a single thing about it, except to have you here on the pod. Yeah. Well, that's- um, but actually, recently, there was a, a journalist here doing an article, and um, she happens to be one of your certified practitioners. So she was like, hey, can I just show you the some Masterson method? And I was like, yes. So I was, I was really excited to learn about it. And now I'm even more excited to be talking to you because like now I, I've had a little introduction and real life with one of my horses and I just think it's so cool. So, so yay. Who was, who is it you were talking to? Uh, Katrina Hayes. Oh, Katrina. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. 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 So she did, um, we took a a beautiful time with, um, a young filly of mine and, um, just walked me and my assistant through it. And, uh, she had the biggest <laughs> releases and such and, and kind of had to wait a lot um for some of the really the little releases and then after a, f- a few little releases she just did like different at different times two down dog stretches yeah. 
an opposite stretch, stretching the leg. I mean, really huge stuff. So, well, some horses are 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 kind of protective, you know. So when you mm -hmm. when you're not using any pressure, you you're bringing their awareness to things that they've been blocking out in their body, you know, mm -hmm. tension or something, you know. Uh, and so they're once you start bringing their attention to it and they start feeling it, they don't. It's a little un, weird or uncomfortable for them, so they don't want to show it. But if you stay light enough, long enough, their nervous system is going to switch from that guarding to the releasing and that's often when you get those big all of out of the blue a big big release like those stretches and yeah. yawning it's pretty it's pretty exciting when that happens because you you had no idea what was in there you know right until you're asking the horse in a different way uh what's going on in their body and that's when they feel it so. yeah exactly and just the um the, and I'll, I'll let you do kind of an introduction for anyone who's out there going, I mean, I don't know yeah, what, who what, doesn't what, know what about the Masterson about? method, <laughs> but yeah, like, what are we talking about? But, um, but part that like to watch a horse do that, it just, it feels like such an honor that they feel that freedom to be able to express themselves like that. And I know that's a big, a big part of what you do. So maybe can you uh, just, yeah, tell people um, what, is the Masterson method? Yeah. So when I when I was uh, I was grooming hunter jumpers when I started uh, noticing uh, when massage therapists or chiropractors or acupuncturists would or craniosacral therapists would be working on the horses that there were these subtle changes in their behavior while they were working on them. You know, it might be a blink or it might be a change in breathing or something, and um, and uh, that's what kind of intrigued me. I wasn't really interested in learning how to do any type of massage therapy or anything, but I was really intrigued by what the horse was, was saying with subtle changes in behavior that anybody could see. It's just, and I'm sure they would see these, you know, the, these changes in behavior, what I, I call responses, responses to the touch. Um, but they weren't, they were trained to do what they were trained to do, you know, the therapists. So I wasn't trained to do anything. So when I saw what was going on, I would, I started experimenting using really light, you know, touch on the horse. And I, and um and I I got these huge releases from the horse and it, I I can well first of all what I'll do is I'll tell you like my wife said I had to have a 15 second elevator speech when I first started working on horses and people want to know what it was and when I started teaching it so the elevator speech was um, Masters and Methods a way of of uh, working on the horse where you learn to read and follow the horse's responses to your touch to help it release tension in key junctions of the body that most affect performance. So that was the elevator speech. And um, the, key to, the key to this is, is learning the level of touch to use so that the horse isn't bracing against you and learning how to read what the responses are. And how, want me to keep going on how I, how I got started? Yeah, time. sure. Yeah, because I was I was gonna ask about that. So yeah, uh, so, yeah so keep... I was, I was grooming hunter jumpers for a show barn that was based here where I live in Iowa and they were showing, you know, and in, in the Midwest and then they started expanding out and showing in uh, Lexington and then Ocala and then eventually down in Wellington. And um, there was, uh, while we were in Estes Park at a show, um, there were these two ladies that, uh, that massaged the horses that, that our, tra that our trainer had come in and massaged the horses, our horses. And they started their, their, um, their session with uh, by running their fingers very lightly down the bladder meridian, which is a, a Chinese traditional Chinese medicine meridian, from runs from the pole just alongside the top line all along, all the way down each side of the spine, and then it goes down the hind limb and down to the hoof. And they did that to relax the horse. And so I was watching them do this, and I noticed these little blinks. You know, every once in a while, the horse would blink as they were going over a spot, and I could see the horse was feeling something there, um, but. Um, because they were, they were, there was a little change in behavior. But anyways, they showed me how to do that, and um, it was really simple. And but I, but as I would go down the uh, the top line of the horse, I would be watching the eye, and if I if the horse blinked or the eyelid twitched or the lips twitched or something, I would just stop there to see what would happen without um, rubbing it or putting any pressure on it or anything. Just wait, because I I wasn't trained to massage and I didn't want to massage. I just waited to see what would happen. And I, I noticed that if I stayed there really light and didn't do anything, the horse would start to drop its head and would start to uh, uh, maybe twitch or shake its head and then it would start to lick and chew. And sometimes it would start to yawn. And so I could see something was going on with the horse just by bringing their attention to where something was going on in their body. So that was one part of it. And then the other part 
was uh, there was a, a horse chiropractor from New Zealand, an older guy. He lived in California, but he used to come out to the East Coast um, to uh, to adjust horses out there into Lexington. And and um, uh, some of the co the horse show vets on the East Coast would bring him out from California because he got amazing results. He used big, very long lever, forceful techniques, um, but he 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 got amazing results and. Uh, meaning the riders would get on the horse and they'd feel a completely different horse, but it was very long lever forceful stuff, but he knew how to read the horse. Like he, he paid close attention to the horses, uh, to the horses he was working on it. And when he got, for example, he got a, a, re a really successful adjustment. Like he would get the nose, you know, get the nose around to the shoulder and get the horse relaxed and then push the nose up over the withers and the horse would stagger and you'd hear like three pops. And then he'd step back to see what the horse had to say. He called it to see what the horse had to say. And, um, if he, if he, if he, he knew he got a, a good adjustment when the horse would stand there and blink a few times and it would start to yawn repeatedly. That was one of his signs that he got a good adjustment, sex, successful adjustment. Mm -hmm. So I would follow him around. I wanted to do what he was doing, but what I, what kind of put these two things together for me was when that was before I saw these gals do the bladder meridian. So when I got to Estes Park and I'm doing the bladder meridian, I'm running my fingers really lightly down the horse and I get a blink and I'd stop and wait there. Often the horse, when it let go of tension, it would start to yawn repeatedly, mm. just like the, the, when this guy got a really good adjustment. And so that's what got two and two together. And I realized that you can, if you use, I didn't, I, I, uh, I would have liked to have learned how to do what the chiropractor was doing, but he'd been doing it for 40 years and he learned from us. Some other guy had been doing it from 40 years in New Zealand. And, and it was, uh, you can't just start yanking a horse around like that, yeah. you know, without doing damage. So what I did is I would, um, I would, uh, break those adjustments down into little gentle movements, you know, go down the neck and gent gently move my way down the, the vertebra of the neck. And every time the horse braced, I would soften my hands and the horse would let some tension go. And I would get the same responses, you know, the dropping the head, uh, yawning repeatedly, r reaching around and stretching. So it turned out to be a super effective uh, way of getting the horse to release tension in the muscles that pull on joints and pull on the skeleton. And, and I, so I would follow this guy around whenever he was drive him to different barns and hold the lead rope. And, and um, he didn't, he didn't really share a lot because you know he, he he didn't want competition i guess but and he was he was pretty much in demand but he would he would let little things slip or i'd ask him questions and he'd answer them but i learned you know the for example those three key junctions of the body the pole and atlas junction the neck shoulder withers and the hind end the sacroiliac mm -hmm. and lumbosacral junction were pretty key areas of the horse that when they get torqued up um and they get restricted in movement, everything around them tightens up. And then the horse, uh, the horse loses range of motion and the muscles become tight and sore. If you can release tension in those three key junctions, you're gonna get a huge improvement in performance. So that was kind of the basis of it, uh, of this. Um, and I started working on our barns horses and then I started working on other horses. And, and um, it turns out that it's very effective too. It's not only fun because you're interacting with the horse and the horse is part of the process, you know, um, mm -hmm. but um, but that it, it really works because the trainer or the owner won't call you back if it doesn't work. Like, you know, I didn't know any anatomy. I learned it as I went along, but uh, you can know every muscle in the body and every bone in the body and that will be pretty impressive at first, but if your horse doesn't go better afterwards, you know, you're not, they're not going to call you back. So, um, that's, this turned into a pretty effective way of working on horses. And then, uh, owners wanted to learn it because it's very interactive with the horse. Um, you're not just doing it to the horse, you're doing it with the horse and you're learning how to read what it's telling you when it's where it's holding tension and when it's released. And, um, that's a huge benefit if you're doing any modality, learning how to do that, whether it's massage or, or craniosacral or anything myofascial, um, but um, oh, I got I'm going off track. Anyways, it, uh, people want to learn it, so I started teaching it, and it's easy to learn. You know, it's not uh, you can learn the basics pretty easily, and then you can kind of go on from there. Um, uh, so that's when I started teaching it, and it turned into this um, what it is today. So yeah, could you? I, <laughs> it's so fascinating to me the the 
transitions of like you're there you are as a groom for you know hunter jumpers minding your own business yeah. <laughs> and now you've got this whole thing and I, I I'm fascinated by those moments where like something grabs your attention and then you choose to follow it and mm -hmm. you just kept following it following it I think that's that's, that's fascinating. Exactly, yeah they're little, little like little aha moments and you get those mm -hmm. in writing too right you get yeah. those aha moments and you know you're on the right track and it and if you kind of follow that and trust it, then mm -hmm. and and just doing the next thing, you know. So yeah, if, you know, door opens and and you go through it, and if that works, fine. If it doesn't, then you do something different. But yeah. it's having the patience, you know, to watch the horse and and um, observe the horse and trust that something's working. Mm -hmm. That's something. Yeah, something you said. Um, you know, this technique it's about doing it with the horse and not to the horse, and that's something that I use. Um, in, in my methods too, we're doing dressage. Dressage is not supposed to be something done to the horses. It's something done with the horse and actually, you know, for the horse. Yeah. And, you know, when you're doing body work, I can see, you know, sort of the premise. It's easier to see the premises. Oh, I'm, I'm helping the horse. Uh, in dressage, it's not always <laughs> as obvious a premise. It's like, no, I'm trying to get the horse to do stuff. But so much of what I find in, in what I do it's about dropping the the defensiveness, you know, that that natural defensiveness that horses who are, you know, could be eaten yeah, <laughs> evolutionarily, um, that there's such a system of, um, and you talk about this too, of, of like hiding their pain and hiding their, you know, they can be so um, stoic and, so much of what we do to them, they develop this bracing defensive system. And a lot of what I do is about like how much of that can we, you know, gain that trust and, and teach them it's safe to drop that. It's safe that we are listening to them. We do hear them when they show me one thing or another. And, and that's one of the things I just loved about the, the little bit that I know about your technique is it's not me applying this manipulation to the horse it's me asking yeah. you know what's going on here what's going on here and bringing that awareness to the horse and then it really does feel like we're doing it together and and I don't you know I don't feel like yeah it's it's the horse it's giving the horse the opportunity to yeah, we miss a lot. We miss a lot in the horses, um, what they're telling us with their body language, because they can't, they don't talk, right? They can't talk mm -hmm. to us. So, uh, you know, whether we're riding or doing this type of body work, we miss a lot of times the horse gets it. And then we miss that the horse get it. So it gets it. So we're trying, we try to do, we do it again, you know, with we're training a horse or riding a horse. So we ask the horse something and the horse gets it and we miss that he got it. So we, we ask again and then the horse doesn't, well, okay, you want me to do something different. And so they'll do something different. That's not what you wanted. And so it kind of snowballs. But when you do this type of body work and that, and there's, there are two types of techniques. One, I call the search response, stay release, where you search for lightly for a response, you get a response. You just wait there and give the horse's nervous system time to go from guarding something to letting it go. And, and then you get it, st that's staying and then you get a release. So you're really not doing anything to the horse except bringing its awareness to something. And then we have movement techniques, which ask for movement in the, say, starting up at the pole and the neck. And it's movement in a relaxed state. It's not just moving the horse. It's like getting, putting your hands on the horse, softening your hands when the horse softens you ask for a little movement of like, you know, the vertebra of the neck as you go down, you wiggle a little, soften, wiggle, soften. And um, as you go down the neck, when if you come across an area where there's tension, you know, in one part of the neck, um, as you gently wiggle it, the horse will brace because now, now it feels it, you know, so it'll brace. And when it braces, you soften. When you soften your hand, the horse lets go of that tension and you can move through it. So they're, they're both of them are the same thing. They're, they're staying under the horse's bracing response. So if the horse braces while you're asking for the movement, you soften and they release some of that tension that they've been guarding. Um, and so, uh, you learn how subtle the horse's body language is, you know, and how sensitive they are, because if you're not, if you're not paying attention to the blink, if you're just ignoring that, then you're missing what the horse is telling you. Yeah. And if you're just pushing through the movements, you're missing what the horse is telling you. So uh, it does, I kind of see how it, it equates to training and riding too, because if we're not paying attention, we're missing what the horse is telling us. Right.
Right. And then, and then you're dealing with the sort of secondary tertiary problems of there's the little thing. And then there's the thing they did to protect themselves from the little thing. And then there's the stuff we added on and now they're bracing against that. And, you know, this, this happened just the other day, somebody was asking me, they're describing a horse that had a lot of problem with brace and, you know, when, when riding, and she said, so I keep practicing the lateral, you know, lateral yields of the neck. And I, and I said, you know, they were good standing still, but as soon as movement, I was like, well, you know, if the horse thinks he's got to bring his nose to your knee and he can't, he's going to brace (laughs) to protect himself. So what I was telling her was like, just the, the little micro yields, that first moment, like at that first moment that you take a feel of the rain, if they go, no, like you can't go past that. Yeah. It's like just to stay dissolved, stay dissolved, because it's really so much about trust. Uh, you know, well, for, for me dissolved. with the movement, it's like, trust yeah. me, if you give, I'm not going to take. If you right. give, I'm not going to take. Right. That stay dissolved, like, or, you know, pause so they can let go and then you can ask a little more. So. It, they do everything for a reason, you know, if they're bracing as you're trying to get them to laterally bend in the neck, they're bracing because they're doing it for a reason. They just, it's not because they just don't want to do it, you know, it's because it's uncomfortable. You know, if you're coming around with the horse and all of a sudden he can't, then that's, there's a reason for it. So you can make him come around and mm-hmm. he'll, he'll go past that spot where it's uncomfortable, you know, by using other muscles, but you're, but he's not like, he's not actually relaxing his head around hmm Yeah. Which is a huge difference. Uh, so different body work methods work on, you know, there's, there's methods that work on the fascia. There's methods that work on the energy. There's methods that work on the spine. Like you said, the chiropractic or the muscles. So what is the Masterson method? What system? I, is I, I kind of noticed from the beginning that there was a part of the horse's nervous system that's guarding it, this tension. And there's mm-hmm. a part that's releasing the tension. So I always saw it as working with the horse's nervous system, you're, but you're using the skeleton to ask for relaxed movement. If you're doing the movement techniques, you're using the skeleton to wiggle your way, you know, through different, I call them wiggle, but it's relaxed mm-hmm. movement through different part, uh, areas of the body and through these junctions of the body. Um, but when the horse tells you that the nervous system kicks in, the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight kicks in, what's guarding something, you have to, soften and then or wait if you're doing the light techniques until the nervous system lets go of that you know the sympathetic stops guarding it and then the parasympathetic is what's working that's the part that's letting go of the tension so it, it, before i knew the big words you know i just knew there was part of the nervous system that releases tension and part that brought that guards and braces against tension so you're working with the nervous system but it's, a, it's also pretty cool because as you do more and you learn you know you do more uh, work on more horses and and kind of figure out new techniques and then um you realize there's other stuff going on like the fascia you know mm-hmm. some of the techniques are very subtle like not subtle like energy there's energy it's all energy work but i yeah, i don't yeah. do energy work i don't feel energy in my hand i just watching the 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 responses of the horse but that there's some techniques where when the horse lets go of tension the fascia lets go and mm-hmm. so and the fascia it's it weaves through everything and um it's highly enervated you know so it's like to me the fascia is like a communication system through the body all the way through the body so mm-hmm. you can ask this for this area to release and if you if the horse really releases with their nervous system then the fascia lets go mm-hmm. so it's it's working on a much deeper level than just on the surface because there are certain points on the horse in the in the lumbar area where you can search for responses and when you find if you stay light enough and you find those responses, if you wait long enough, they'll start to release tension in the psoas and the core muscles. Mm. So, so you're not even access. You can't even access those. They're like that deep under the spine of the lumbar spine. Wow. And, um, and then you can't see what's going on. But if you, I've worked on enough horses that when I waited in that area long enough, and I learned that if you stay, stay on that spot while the horse's toe is resting, if you can get their hind toe to rest while you're doing it, then at one point, all of a sudden the horse takes a deep breath and goes deep breath and the back just comes up and then and then you go to do the leg moves and the legs can move where they weren't moving before and then the rider gets on and they you come back next week or two weeks later to work on the horse and say what'd you do to my horse remember the first (laughs) time i had that happened i thought it was it was a grand prix jumper and he's what'd you do to my horse and i said oh i thought oh i I guess (laughs) <laughs> and 
uh, I said, well, he was pretty tight in the lumbar and I think in his, in his, uh, in his core muscles. And, um, and he said, wow, he's never jumped like that before. So you get that kind of feedback and you learn what works. And so then you, you kind of add that on, but, um, you know, the horse's hind end, it, well, we don't have video here, but a horse's hind end is supposed to work. Like, you know, if you were swimming, you're, you're moving your whole shoulders mm -hmm. and your arms. So the horse's hind end should be working all together, not just the legs paddling, you know? Right. So when the core muscles tighten up, then the horse ends up just, you know, leg moving and they're not using their whole hind end. You'll see the lumbar just not moving and no, no, no swaying and rocking. And when you release that, all of a sudden the horse's hind end can move. And then you, after you getting, you get the muscles to release the tension, you get the, the gentle movement through the, through the back and through the, and with the pelvis with leg releases, and then it moves, it moves even better, but it's just the process of you, you know, you work, it, you know, I worked on for, uh, um, nine years, I worked on probably six or 700 horses a year and you just learn what works and what doesn't work Yeah, it starts to come together. I'm just, uh, I think part of this is like, how do I know the core muscles are releasing and the psoas and the iliosaurus are releasing well. I, you know, when I can see the horse's body change and then the rider gets on and that, that part of the, and then you look at the anatomy and you say, oh, well, that makes sense. That yeah. muscle is connecting here and here and it's not allowing this to move. So, yeah, it's very, very cool. Um, yeah. How, how does Masterson method fit with the different modalities? So I know there's a lot of people, I mean, myself included, who would have different, different, you know, has a team. <laughs> yeah. And how did, how does that all fit together? Well, uh, you know, I think a couple of things, certain horses respond to certain things better than other things. Some just like people, some respond to chiropractic better and some don't, some respond better to acupuncture. You know, I, my, one of my really good friends is an acupuncturist and after multiple times of going there and like, and telling him it's, you know, this is really painful and I'm not feeling any better. He said, well, the acupuncture isn't for you. So, so um, that's one thing. Certain things work better for different horses. And then uh, certain things work together good, well, too, you know, um, this works well with chiropractic because it's easier for a chiropractor to get an adjustment. And sometimes the horse will release the tension and the, and the horse may not need the adjustment. Um, it works well with massage and also any modality you, you you do, if you learn how to read the visual responses from the horse, it's going to be more effective, whether you're doing, you know, massage or where you're doing myofascial or craniosacral, you know, if you learn how to read what the horse is telling you, you're going to, it's going to be more effective. So um, it um, it's just another tool for the tool, toolbox. Yeah. You know? I can really see it being valuable to like, say, even if a horse needs a specific chiropractic adjustment to have those to, to be able to dissolve as much of the brace and tension that's in there that the horse can by themselves. And then, um, in my experience, then if they're in that state, then the adjustments um, oh, yeah. go smoother and they last longer. Yeah, they, that's exactly what, what a, a lot of our people that learn this, the practitioners say when they work with chiropractors, that they, mm -hmm. it's easier to do the adjustments and that they last longer. And also that sometimes they, they won't need the adjustment again the next time because, you know, the muscles that you'll you have these tension patterns that are stuck in there. And so they pull the muscle out of alignment, muscles pull the joint out of alignment or the joints out of alignment. And so they get adjusted. And then um, when they come back, it's, it, you know, it's like they'll do the same adjustment every time they come back because that's the pattern. But right. if you can lose the, that pattern, then the, then it won't come back is often or maybe not at all. And yeah. when we work on a horse, we work on the whole horse, you know, so it's not, he just needs adjusting here or he just needs releasing here. You do the whole horse because it's all interconnected, you know, yeah. and it, it's all interconnected. So one thing I did learn from this chiropractor and I don't use his name because he, he had a lot of people that claimed they were trained by him and he was yeah. happy to help me help him. And he said, just don't ever claim that you were trained by me because I don't train people. And a lot of people have, <laughs> And I said, and I have always uh, respected that. So, um, but anyways, one of the things, a few, a couple of things I learned that, you know, that, that there are common tension patterns in the body. For example, horses, they'll often be tightened up more in the right pole and atlas. They'll be tighter on the right and in the left hind, in the left gluteal and the sacrum area. So mm -hmm. there's a diagonal pattern there that, that nine out of 10 horses just, in my experience, they, that's what I find in nine out of 10 horses. And so, um, 
as, a, as an example of how the horse is connected together. When you're working in the lower neck area, like C7 in front of the shoulder where the neck joins the trunk, um, often when you're working in that area, the horse, it, he'll feel something in the groin and start stomping his foot or kicking at his belly. And that's when you're doing really light work. If you're putting any pressure on, they won't feel anything because they're going to block it out. But when you pay attention to what's going on with the rest of the body, for example, you're in that area of the lower neck and you're waiting there for a response, doing nothing, and the horse will stomp his hind leg. Then when you get to the hind end, you realize this horse has a lot of tension in the groin. You know, there's stuff going on in the groin. So you wouldn't think there's a connection between the neck and the groin, but there is. Yeah. And- <laughs> Because the horse tells you there is. And then when you right, go, right. the horse moves better. So Yeah. No, very cool. Now, I'd love to talk about the, for me, I'm fascinated with the movement dynamic. Right. So that's kind of in my world, I'm looking at how the horse moves and then how the horse and the rider are moving together. And a lot of what, uh, you know, come from, you know, normal dressage background, and now do things a little differently. And one of the main things I do differently is to work with the horse and to on the ground and riding, give them movement possibilities. And I observe them and I try to turn off my trained brain for a little while. And I go, here's some possibilities. You could have your haunches to the right or the left, try that first ride. Shoulders could be over here, try. And then I observe and I know you know, I look for signs of release and ease of movement and, and freedom and stuff like that. And, you know, the same thing that, that I've had my students report, like, oh, the, the chiropractic adjustments, you know, hold better or the, you know, the pattern is broken. So I think what we have in common, Jim, is this like listening to the horse. I know you talk about it's all an experiment. Yeah. And, you know, it's the horse that it's that communication. Oh, okay. I felt you do that. And let me do this. How can I, I always come with the approach of how can I help you? Like, what, what could I do that would make you feel better? How do you want me to sit? And sometimes I'm quite surprised by how it in one way seems counterintuitive. Like they feel like they're falling on the left shoulder, but when I ask their shoulder to go more left, they have more ease of movement. And if I'm twisting the right, that's weird. But I start with where where they say they want me, and then we can um, come back. So I'm just curious of your point of view of how the movement dynamic fits into the, you know, the team that we have with our horses, because we, you know, the training, the body work, it's, it's all connected. And I know a lot of times um, there's a question of, okay, the horse isn't going quite right. Do you you know, is it a training issue first and then the body work or the body work and then the training? And yeah, do you have any thoughts well, on that? thing you that said is, is that we get into patterns too, you know, in our training, you know, so, oh, if the horse isn't doing this, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. And usually it's more of, the, of something, <laughs> not less of something. Right. And um, with this, less is always more, but, but we get into training patterns and I think that's one thing that helped me figure this out with the horse is that I wasn't trained to do any massage or anything. So if I'd have been trained and I saw, say I saw the response in the, in the horse, I would just start massaging it or something. And I wasn't. So that really helped. I just waited to see what the horse did and then it released tension. So you're just describing if, you know, if, the, if somebody's had a, having trouble with a certain um, movement or a certain move, then we're trained to, uh, you know, well, we need to do this now when maybe we just need to do something different and let's see what the horse does. You know, it's, it's an experiment. Everything we do with the horse with body works is an experiment. We're asking what's, what's uh, we are asking, Oh, there's something here. We're waiting to see what the horse says. If he releases it, then there is, there was something there. If there's nothing, you move on. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, you know, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just um, in my world, I see so so much um, good body work is getting ridden right out of it. <laughs> you know, so, it's like the you know when the body work and the the training methods don't don't match, right? Yeah, like there's certain, like you always wonder if the horse is not doing something you want. Is it because of it? Is it a training issue? Does it not understand what you want? which is your responsibility makes to, to, to get them to understand, you know, if the horse isn't understanding it, you just yell louder, you know, it's not going to understand any better. So is it a training issue or is it a, or a physiological component? And um, 
that's the question, you know, and as a trainer, you're going to say, no, it's a training issue. And as a body worker, you're going to say, no, it's a physical issue. But um, the best thing to do is try both. You know, if you're having trouble training a horse to do a certain thing, especially if it's on one side and not the other, they get it one direction, not the other. That's probably a physiological issue, you know, and, and you know, people say horses need to learn on both sides. But if they phys if they're physically having trouble doing what you're asking in one direction, you, you if you're if you train them i don't like to say like if you're a good trainer you can get a horse to deal with a lot of pain and just do what you're gonna you're asking no matter how uncomfortable it is but that to me isn't a good trainer you know it's not good for the horse he's getting the horse to do it but um but that's one kind of a red flag is the horse able to pick up the left lead and not the right lead well you can drill it until it gets the right lead but in so many cases, that's not going to last. Down the road, they're going to they're going to have a problem, physical problem, because mm -hmm. they're you're 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 forcing them to do something that uh, that's fighting some phys physiological thing. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I think it's this you know this idea of asking the horse and observing the horse, and they're telling us. And and I agree. I think a lot of times, um, the job of a trainer seems to be the art of making horses do stuff that they're, they don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. And, and it sort of goes so opposite to the spirit that you're approaching a horse with of just, you know, tell me and you can relax. And, and I, I just think there's some, there's some overlap in how I'm approaching the training part that just resonates. So, you know, so much it's because there's some body workers that are like, Oh, this is the broken part. I need to fix the broken part and apply this, treatment to the horse. Um, and I, so I love how you're really listening to the horse and working with the horse and, you know, your touch is bringing the awareness and sort of empowering the horse that it's a safe place for them to let go of that. Yeah. And, uh, and I know you talk about, uh, the effect of, of our presence, even, you know, on the horse during the treatment. And, and I know you've, you've said, you know, sometimes you need to really move away before the horse can really yeah. give the lease, the release. Um, I think in one video I was just watching on the bladder meridian, you know, you mentioned the horse, the horse like did a sneaky release when you weren't looking at him. You're like, yeah, see, he released when I wasn't looking at him. Yeah, you, some horses, and, uh, they don't want to show that vulnerability. So you'll yeah. do something and you step back to see what they have to say. And you might step back three feet and you think, oh, that's plenty of room. Well, to the horse, a quarter mile is what they really would like you to have. That would be like the space they'd like to have. But so you step back another foot, and you see their head drop a little, and you step back another foot and their head drops. And at some point they just let go because you're, they're, you're taking all the pressure off by stepping back. Not that you, know, that you can do that while you're riding, but um, but some horses they don't want to they don't want to show the vulnerability. So you turn around and look the other way, or um, and then you give them time and they might release. So mm -hmm. it, I remember, and I told this story before, but I was working on a horse in the stall and I taken its blanket off and lay, and I leaned, laid it over the stall door. And I would do some work and step back to this mare and, and she, I knew she would wanted to release, but she just wasn't going to do it. It's almost like she was, you want to yawn and you're holding your mouth closed. Like she would just, wasn't going to show anything, but I knew it was working because, because, well, I knew it was working. And at one point I did a little more and I stepped back. And at one point she went over and stuck her head under the blanket that was hanging over the door and started yawning. With her head <laughs> and so or some, some horses will go stand in the corner and yawn and then come back to you. So it's just interesting. You just, you know, uh, not, you know, they're very sensitive animals. I mean, they're big, strong animals, but what do you want to work with? A big, strong, you know, horse that's going to fight you or you want to work with a horse that's going to work mm -hmm. with you. So, yeah. it, and the way you're training it, it there is an overlap there because you're listening to the horse and you're giving it a chance. But as far as you know, you talk. We we're talking about whether it's a training issue or a physical um, component to it. If you're, if there's any doubt, then just do some body work. You know, don't just keep pushing the horse. If there's any doubt, you know, because that's an easy, it's an easy, simple thing to do. And uh, and the bladder meridian technique, it's so simple. I mean, anybody can do it. You can go on our website and there's a 15 minute video that'll show you how to do it with your horse, but it'll uncover, it could uncover all kinds of things that might might correlate to problems you're having with your horse or movement issues. Um, yeah. so, but another red flag would be, you know, one thing is if they can do it one direction and not the other, it's not because their brain's not working on side, that side. It's because there's something that's physically 
in the way. And so another red flag is if all of a sudden a horse starts doing a certain behavior that's not what you want out of the blue, like a horse just starts bucking, you know, over the jump when it lands. It just didn't, they didn't get together the night before and say, hey, let's all buck after we jump. That it's because something's bothering the horse. And so you can correct the behavior and make it stop bucking, but you're not, you're not helping the horse. You're not helping the horse move better because it's going to end up being a problem like we would have with a bad back. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get me started. (laughs) Super helpful. All right. So I have, um, I have something that, that I do that kind of, ridges into your world. And I know you have this whole program and then I'm like, Oh, well, I do something like that, but I do do something like that. And I'm, I'd love to talk with you about it. So I've just called it my moving massage technique. And the intention is very similar. So I don't, um, I I'm moving with the horse. So he's walking online. I can even do it with them trotting once they're really loose. Um, and I, I don't really think bladder marine. I just start touching my horse. So, and the first thing is, can I touch them without interfering with their movement? Right. So some horses, they're like, I need to yield. (laughs) And I go, no, 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 it's not a yield. I just want to be able to like, as if I'm walking next to them and I brush a fly off their back or just put my hand on, you know, walking, holding hands, walking in the park. That's kind of how I describe it. And then once I can touch them with, you know, without causing any misunderstanding, then I just kind of do, I move along and I notice if something changes and then I just wait there. And if, and if I even think that maybe I felt something soften or relax, I just, I just move away. And for me, I guess, because I'm a, I'm a trainer, how they're moving informs me so much. I, I just get a lot of information from how they're moving and um, yeah, it, I found it, it, brings their focus to me for the ones who are kind of feeling a little bit unsafe. Um, It, it helps me just feel their body and the same thing, find those moments of tension. And I really love, I think as a trainer, like we were saying, you know, so many times trainers doing things to their horse, it changes the relationship that I have with them through touch where just because I'm touching you and you're moving, it doesn't mean it's an aid. I'm not asking anything of you. I just want to feel the connection and send you love and relaxation. Um, so it's been super fun. So I'm just going to throw that out there because I, I hope you go and experiment with it and then come back and tell me what you think. Yeah, well, you're, been... well, if, you're, if you're noticing, well, one thing, let's say you're noticing you're, 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 you're watching the horse move and you're into it. You're, you're, you're drawn to some area of the horse that might not be moving the way you want it to. Mm-hmm. You can bring the horse's awareness to it without bracing, without the horse bracing. And then mm-hmm. when the horse's awareness is there and it's not feeling like, it's learned that you're not giving it an aid and it's learned that you're not going to put pressure on it. It's just then that, that area might let go. You can do a lot and you can get the horse to really release a lot of tension by moving it right. Yeah. Moving it in a relaxed manner uh, uh, through movements you want, you can get the horse in the walk or maybe even in the trot just to start to release tension in these joints and junctions that are, I call them, they're torqued, like they're torqued. They won't move or they won't move one way. They'll only move the other way. So just through movement, you can get the horse to release tension. But when you're bringing their awareness to it by putting your hand on in a way that they've learned not to brace against, that they're trusting, right. then that's going to be hugely beneficial physically and, emo- and emotionally. Because once the when you learn how to read what the horse is telling you, it's huge. But when the horse gets that you get what it's saying, it's even huger. They really yeah. start to trust you. Yeah. Tension. that they see like that we see a, it you're putting your hand on an area that might be really uncomfortable and they brace and then they realize oh it's not i am right. there's no pressure on that then they they know that you're paying attention to them and then when it releases it's even better yeah yeah and that's what the message is like i feel that too what is that what can you do with this and i and because i work with sometimes some big moving horses i found i can start to do it at a distance mm-hmm. so i can sort of touch them without without touching them And, uh, which is pretty cool because I think they can, they're really good at sort of seeing where we're focusing. I know that's where you're focused and and I don't, you know, it's not like woo woo. It's not like, you know, it's not woo woo. You're just bringing their awareness to somewhere that they, they're feeling something that's uncomfortable or they've blocked it out and they're not feeling it anymore. 
And if you keep mm-hmm. their attention on it in a way that they can't block it out because you're not putting pressure on, then they'll start to release it. So, and then um, it also helps to, you know, slaughter a chicken under the full moon every couple of months. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, other than that, it's not woo at all. It's just, yeah, bringing- no, it doesn't feel, I, I wouldn't claim for it to be any kind of woo thing. I think they're just really able to see where we're focusing. And, and because I've done it from, you know, touching. And then as I'm thinking about, as I approach to touching them, they're, they're totally seeing which direction my, my hand is going. I don't think I'm magic. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. And their body language, they communicate through, I mean, body, their body language is so subtle that we can't even see it, you know, so they're going to pick up on even the subtlest things we do. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing how something so big and strong and powerful is so um, aware. I think, I mean, these are all just my philosophies but they've survived for you know millions of years by being so sensitive and aware of their environment you know i mean they're really in tuned into their environment that's how they've survived but they've also learned how to block out the part that's um they don't want to show vulnerability so they just like uh, if we get sore somewhere we can take an aspirin we can get a massage we can complain a bitch and moan they can't they just have to get on with life they can't you know stop and and um, have a story around it, you know, or do anything. Yeah. They can't even do anything about it. So, um, uh, and, and that's where I think the trust, the trust part is so huge. And um, I, I just love this idea that with what you do, it's just, again, that awareness and creating this environment where it's safe for them. You're not doing anything to them. And there's just so much trust. And I think that's, that's built so much into the training that I do also. Um, I'd love to ask you about your, you wrote a book called Dressage Movements Revealed. Mm -hmm. I have not read the book. So can you give me a little, a little uh, Cliff Notes version of it? Cause I was like, oh, he wrote a book that says dressage in the title. (laughs) Yeah. I had a client um, who was a dressage trainer and a, and I don't know what level judge it was like super high level judge, but she's a dressage trainer. I don't know what the different levels of judging are, but, um, but she, I was at a barn where she kept the horses and I was a dressage barn. I was working on horses and she was watching and she was, she was curious about it. And so she started asking questions and I started showing her things and she, um, she just clicked with it and then Coralie Hughes and then um, she went through our, our training program you know certified practitioner program and um, she said it changed the way she wrote too you know she, the way she she used to write dressage and so um, but she knew a lot about dressage so we decided to put to do this uh, pro- project together um, about you know it would be educational about you know how the horse moves and try to for me, the goal was to get dressage riders to be uh, just be aware that there's a horse under them that has moving parts and those parts can get tight and those parts can start to restrict movement and that might affect the way they want their horse to move. That was the goal for me. And then so we got together with Betsy Steiner and um, as the writer and we did. Uh, I don't know if we did the video first or the book first, but anyways. The goal was there were two parts. One was just to look, watch how the horse moves through the dressage movements, and then put add muscles, some some of the muscles to that, so that you know a little rider would be aware of become aware of some biomechanics. And then the second part was to show some techniques, bodywork techniques, master some method techniques to help release tension in certain areas of the horse, but that might be restricting movement, like we do. We do scapula releases that um, release tension in the scapula and the C7T1 junction that might be in interfering with um, lateral movement in the horse or extension in the horse. And we do hind leg releases that 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 will help with lateral movement in the hind in the hind limbs, adduction and abduction, and the movement in the lumbar area. So it was kind of a dual thing. And so um, yeah, and then we paint. So in the book. And in, in the video, we had uh, Susan Harris. She was like, I think the invisible or a horse. I don't, I don't remember it was the invisible horse or the invisible rider, or it was the inside. Oh, the horse is inside out. Yeah, inside out. Yeah. He painted all the muscles on on this horse and be- big, beautiful horse. And, he, and, and then Betsy Steiner rode the horse. And then we had videog- videographers video it. And then we would, in the video, we slow the motions down into slow, mo- slow motion and 
Betsy and Coralie could talk about what's going on with the dressage movements and I and Coralie and I could talk about what might be going on, you know, with the physiology. And so that was the goal of the book and the DVD. And uh, that sounds great. I need to, I, I need to pick that up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got a little really bit of, we got a, well, you know, dressage writers, we got a little bit of criticism because um, what was his name? The horse, he was amazing. He was like 21. He, he was a retired Grand Prix horse, um, but he was behind the vertical in some of these movements, but he, he was, comp he was relaxed, but he also was working really hard. Like the video, the guy in the video, they're doing the video, like, Oh, have him do that again. Have him do that again. Yeah. The horse was getting, he was just a champion, but um, anyways. Um, you're, you're not, you're not in the dressage world unless someone's complaining, right? Yeah. Yeah. But he was an amazing <laughs> horse and he, and, oh. and Betsy rode him through, I mean, through these advanced movements and over and over again. And he just was so, so fluid, you know, but that was, it was, a, it was a, about education. It wasn't about how to ride dressage. It was about how the horse moves. And, just to understand the movements and the muscles and the dynamics that are going on and how you can help them do it better. I yeah. mean, that sounds good to me. And the book's on it. It's an ebook now. It's you can get it electronically. And then the, the video, we can get the video on our website too. I mean, it's beautiful to watch the slow motion of the horse move. Well, that's always cool, but to see the muscles painted on the horse is even better. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Jim. Well, where where can people get started with this, and where can where they learn they learn more? Well, the Masterson Masterson Method .com is our website, and um, it explains how the Masterson Method works. And there are um, you can I have a lot. We have a YouTube channel with lots of YouTube videos uh, showing how to do different techniques with your horses. Because I like people to go out and try it and see if it works with them and their horse. And then if they want to learn more, then they can buy the book and the DVD. And if they want to learn more, then we have weekend clinics all over the country um, and in Europe and in Australia. So um, uh, that's kind of how you do it. You know, just go on our website and watch some of the videos and try some of the things. And if you feel like, wow, this is working and my horse loves it and I love it, then you do the next step and it's it's a really nice website, super clear, really informative. You're very generous with showing people how to how to do it and get started. So, um, yeah. thank you. Thank any, you anybody, that. any horse owner can start doing this with their horse and get results. You know, and and uh, it's not like you, you have to spend a lot of money or any money to start doing this. I just want people to do it, and uh, for their their benefit and the horse's benefit. Awesome, awesome. Final if. What do you want people to know? What's what's your message to the world? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe horse related, maybe not. No. <laughs> so I, no, I think that's just it. You know, to to uh, have this connection with your horse is going to help them physically and help uh, help them with your connection and trust with the horse. So that's that's the main message. Awesome. Jim, thank you so much because I know you're you're a busy guy and very much in demand and um really appreciate you again taking this this observation you made and then turning it into this amazing technique and making it available to everybody. There's a lot of steps that go between those two points. And uh I'm, you know, always impressed by people who you know, boldly go and take all those steps well, because you know, it's helping so it. many people. And yeah, you described it before. You just do the next step and then do the next thing, just like you're doing with your your training program. So, mm -hmm. and uh, and being generous with it, you know, because uh, it's not like I own these techniques. You know, it's just like I kind of stumbled across this, observed this thing with the horse, and I just wanted as many people as possible to learn it. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. And thank you for taking this time here today. Yeah, you're welcome.